Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. This morning I'm looking at a book which is probably known to many of you from the uh, Child Poverty Action Group. It's one of their um, handbooks. It's this particular book here. It's called Fuel Rights Handbook. Now in a 17th edition. There's the front spine and then there's the back which explains what's in the book. Some useful quotes as well which I think are very uh, helpful. The book has a shaded area, you can see, which is the makes up the, the bulk of the um, work itself. And then you do have a very detailed index at the back. And you've also got some very important appendices, which I'll come on to. That one's on draft court claims, and understanding fuel bills, annual statements, um, reading your meter, um, guaranteed standards of performance and effectively useful lists in uh, Appendix 1. The book itself, let's start at the front, it's been written by a number of people, I'll mention their names in a minute. Um, that's the front page, then you get into the main book itself. It's a light paperback, this, those are the ma names of the authors, I'll mention them as I said in a moment. You've then got the contents chapters, acknowledgements and contents. It covers a very interesting area. There are 14 chapters. The most important, in my view, is Remedies at the end, chapter 14. Then it's got the list of the seven appendices right at the bottom, which you can see there. Then you have um, some abbreviations. Again, quite useful, important area of law. There's a very important forward, in addition, um, which sets out what this book is about, written by the main um, author. Then you have a structure for the chapters. You have the chapter, the introduction, then you have a little list of what's actually in it. Um, and it actually goes through very, very logically what you've got. And then you just run through um, everything. There are a whole range of most important um, issues. Uh, for many people, the biggest one, especially in difficult times in arrears. Obviously fuel prices re remain very high. But as I said, remedies, is one area that I do find very helpful. That's the actual remedies title out at the back there. You will notice from the previous chapter that there are a lot of footnotes which are referred to, which are the notes, and they come at the end of each chapter. So you can actually find what you're looking for should you have a particular query. And the index is, is also very well um, provided um, in terms of trying to find specific things depending on what your query might be. Now we've written a review of this uh, book from CPAG. Um, Elizabeth and I talked about it and we had a fairly interesting discussion as to how we would approach the review. As I say, the book is called Fuel Rights Handbook, now in the 17th edition. Now it's written by three people together with the Energy Action Scotland organisation. And the people are Alan Murdy, uh, Cecilia Torsney and Alison Gillies. And they are, they've put together this book, they're the current authors, and Alan Murdy's forward is well worth reading to give you some indication of, of what is happening within the, all aspects of fuel at this present time, in the middle of the second decade of the 21st century. We've given it the title uh, for the review, Excellent Guidance on How to Deal with Fuel Bills and Related Problems for Vulnerable Consumers, including the Small Claims Procedure. And they go into some detail with the small claims procedure, which I think is helpful. The jurisdiction has changed with the increase up to £10,000. And you are, we are finding in the courts a very large number of people now are representing themselves. That does, of itself, cause a few problems because it does take much longer for us to actually have the case heard. But uh, the end result is the same because everything has to be explained and everything um, is set out very clearly normally by the district judge. Can I also say, of course, that in small claims, the likelihood of an appeal is pretty minimal in most cases. So once you've been there, that's basically it for most people. And of course, you don't get costs unless there's a unreasonable behavior by the other side. So this is what we say about the book. Now in its 17th edition, this popular and highly thought of handbook is just what you need if you have concerns about your fuel bills, whether they're for gas or electricity, and whatever your earnings might be. It's rightly called the standard practical guide for consumers in this area of energy supply, and that's what you get here. 
The new edition has been completely revised for 2014. I'm recording this in the early part of 2015, and this is the current book at the moment, but it comes out on an annual basis effectively now. The authors whom I've mentioned are Alan Murdy, uh, Cecilia Torsney and Alison Gillies, and they, together with Energy Action Scotland, remind us that establishing the position of consumers concerning fuel issues remains, quote, a technical area which often has to be determined by reference to contractual terms made in agreements with energy suppliers. And the authors provide an overview of key legal issues, together with practical guidance for common problems which arise for consumers. So it's very much for the consumer, this book. It is to be welcomed that there is particular emphasis placed on issues affecting those on low incomes and those who are living in fuel poverty, which of course is the remit of the Child Poverty Action Group. Reforms to the range of tariffs available still remains a hot topic for consumers, even where there are practical constraints of choice, which people on low incomes are more likely to face with any possible opportunity of switching supplier and with an alleged expansion in competition in the energy market appearing in possibly to many to be illusory. In the foreword, Alan Murdy writes about part six of the Energy Act 2013, which has the end quote of improving the position of consumers in the energy market. He reminds us that section 141 subsection one of that act provides that a person is to be regarded as living in fuel poverty if he is a member of a household living on a lower income in a home which cannot be kept warm at reasonable cost. So there's the definition. And it, this section was written in 2013, so it is obviously relatively new as I record this in 2015. Murdy goes on to say that the provisions are designed to achieve a simplification of the market for consumers so that the cheapest alternatives are available on switching. The problem is still that the debt and arrears remain high so the chapters on benefits and the position of consumers in the private and social rented sectors, together with the new Housing Ombudsman Service, are most helpful additions here, together with an important chapter 14, the last one which I mentioned, which is on remedies. As the commentators have remarked about the Child Poverty Action Group, what would we do without you? And that is the question, because this handbook is an established and inexpensive work which gives the most vulnerable and their advisors, CAB, so forth, pro bono units, essential and basic information um, in a readable form on both the reduction and prevention of fuel poverty, which should be at the top of the list of priorities for British politicians in the second decade of the 21st century, even though it clearly still isn't. Now, this Fuel Rights Handbook 424 therefore remains indispensable. That's until the United Kingdom realises it must make fuel poverty a thing of the past. Of course, it's an aspiration here, but we do have most useful sections in the last chapter to try to bring the more disreputable elements associated with fuel poverty into line by addressing the issue of how to use the civil courts. Hence the point about the um, small claims actions, which I think, again, is very well and very clearly set out. So thank you, uh, CPAG, for bringing together some much-needed sense and detailed advice in what is a difficult area of energy law. And the law stated as at the 1st of October 2014. It's the book again, very light, runs to um, 260-odd pages. There's the index at the back again, as I've mentioned. And you can see abbreviations, the appendices are in the not shaded area, the non shaded area of the back, you can find those. Then you get, as I say, the remedies section in particular um, is an important um, one, it's that one there. Because that is really where you're going to try to sort out a problem if you've got a contentious issue between yourself and the supplier. And as I say, all of the very much more detailed information are in the notes and that that deals specifically with the law and the sections of the relevant legislation and as i say at the front you have very useful abbreviations it's always difficult sometimes to remember the abbreviations so it's useful to have that and then the forward by alan murdy is well worth reading it sets out what he's done for this edition 
where the changes have taken place. So do always read that whenever you get uh, a new edition of these books. Um, as I said, you've got things like the type of meters and methods of payment used and so forth. Altogether, a very good book. And I think one that many people will find help um, help helpful when they have issues concerning uh, the fuel bills that come in and the way in which the whole of their their, their relationship with these organizations is actually um, monitored because sometimes they will be helpful sometimes they won't be so helpful um, but thank you to the three authors and CPAG for an excellent publication which helps us all a great deal thank you bye bye